Crafty Kim, how are you? Thank you for coming. I'm about, I don't know, a couple of minutes early. So we'll wait a few minutes to let everyone else that might be joining join. And hi, Paige. Hi, Kathleen. Thank you for coming. I'm just going to wait a few minutes to see if others come on or not. Because not everybody is on Facebook, so not everybody knows um, I'm doing this tonight. Um, if you're not in my Facebook group, hi, Brandy. Thank you for coming, left-handed crafter. Um, anyway, if you're not in my Facebook group, but of the same name, Deb Halk's Crafty Cottage, that's usually where I post um, when, you know, when I'll be going live and things. I was supposed to do this last night, but... I couldn't. <laughs> I was in the hospital with my mother till 9.30, and I didn't get home till 10. So, hi, Brina. How are you? Hi, Gold Glitter Girl. I forget your first name. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm going to talk about that, Kathleen. I was just waiting for a few more people to come on. But I'll go ahead and get started. How's... Oh, Paige's machine. <laughs> I want to say, I don't have a machine. Well, I have my computer. Jen, okay. Sorry, Jen. I have to I have to start a little cheat sheet list. <laughs> Thanks for coming over, Jen. My mom broke her ankle in two places over the weekend. And she's 90 years old. She fell in the bathroom at her assisted living place while the aide was there. And the aide couldn't catcher because my mom is a bit heavy so we went to the er on sunday and they said they took the x-rays and everything they said your leg's broken in two places we'll put a air cast thing on it and send her on her merry way i'm like are you kidding me anyway so it was taking two or three aids at a time which they don't really have the staff to do to lift her out of her bed or out of her chair to change her all that kind of stuff and I can't I can't do it by myself what a mess it was a mess all day Sunday I was beyond myself but I don't want to talk about this too much <laughs> so then yesterday I got her an appointment with an orthopedic uh, doctor who's the one she sees actually at the wound center but in his office for other than wounds because this isn't wound related it's fracture related and they read the x-rays from the ER and they said they could not operate because, A, she's 90 and has lots of health issues. And, B, she has bad osteoporosis. They didn't feel like any surgery would take because of that in her ankle. Um, so, they, and they said they couldn't put a hard cast on because it just happens to be the bad leg that's still oozing from cellulitis and all this stuff. So, anyway, long story short... That doctor made calls to a, a nursing, skilled nursing facility. They said, yes, they gladly accept her. They just need this, that, and the other thing from the hospital. So they had to admit her to the hospital for observation and get these other tests and evaluations done. Well, she's still there in the hospital because I was adamant that they do this echocardiogram that her cardiologist has been asking for, too, while she's in the hospital. So she doesn't have to go back there. Um, in like a few weeks or month or whatever her appointment is scheduled for because she can't put any weight on this foot and what very little walking she used to do was with a walker and now she can't walk at all so it's just a mess but anyway that's that I don't want to bore you with any more detail so yeah it's kind of a mess but I had a reprieve today so I got a lot of paperwork done and some housework and not any crafting unfortunately but I did the cards for this session yesterday morning so we're good yeah well as far as i know they are brandy they're doing an echocardiogram on her not because of her leg because she has other issues as well and the cardiologist had ordered it in january but we haven't been able to get there either because of snow or her being a sick or me being sick one or the other so now i said while she's in there the hospital can do that so they are doing that tomorrow morning, I just found out. So anyway, okay, Kathleen is having a party. Kathleen Markovich Robinson, who is on here, if you would help her out, um, use don't use this host code that's below all my videos. Use 92ZE, 
G3AX, 92ZEG3AX, and help Kathleen out because um, the more orders she gets, then she'll be eligible for some goodies. So this is my first real online party. So it also helps me too. Um, yeah, so anyway, and I already went over this in previous videos, but I have rewards based on the level of purchase. And for those of you that purchased in, um, you know, what month are we on? In February, your rewards are in envelopes and I've been in my car for two days. I just haven't had time to go to the post office with them. So they are coming. <laughs> um, yeah. And let's see. And if you aren't sure what those are, I can go over them again at the end. I just don't want to do it now. Um, the March paper pumpkins are shipping out. I sent an email out to those people who order through me saying there was a billing glitch. But fortunately, all the people except me that order through my site for paper pumpkin weren't affected by it, just me. <laughs> but they're correcting it and they're not, um, they, the pumpkins are shipping. I've been watching the order system and they are shipping now to um, everyone except the ones that had an error. They're like a, a day or two delayed or something, but they're coming now. So it's too late to order the March one, which had the extra stamp set, but the April 10th one, the April one is supposed to have a distinctive stamp set. And I don't know if you remember what that is. I'll tell you. Um, like these ones here, these are the painted season celebration item. These are distinctive stamp sets. And what it means is it's like um, you can do two step stamping with just one step. You just stamp it and you get all this textured and layered look. I love them. I love distinctives. So this is the Painted Seasons stamp set, which you can only get as a celebration item with designer series paper if you place a $100 order. So, yeah. Hi, Alicia. Thank you for coming over. The gremlins are messing with technology today. Oh, no. Well, then I'm glad they're not doing the echo on mom till tomorrow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, so a couple things also that have been discontinued in the celebration catalog, which is the free. So as you know, right now it started in January. We're in this occasions catalog, which you can just order. Um, if things are still available, you can order. There are some things starting to sell out though. So if you, and um, for example, the butterfly duet punch is not orderable right now. And the cake builder punch is not orderable right now. They, those two will be coming back in the new annual catalog in June. Um, but some other things are starting and I'll go through them in a second. So then we had a celebration too, um, which is the painted, the one, the painted seasons is in and also the country floral dynamic textured impressions embossing folder. Which I haven't used a whole lot, but I have it and I need to do that. And then this all adorned and I just received this on Monday. So I'll be using that soon. It's a stamp set as well. And then they added more items. The Painted Seasons Designer Series paper is now by itself free with $50 purchase. And I went over all these things. Some of these are in the annual catalog, like the Petal Promenade. Delightfully detailed, the mini pizza boxes, the scattered sequenced impressions embossing folder, share what you love embellishment kit, and two times the pearlized dualies or two times the rich raspberry ribbon, velvet ribbon. So those were added. And then we have coordination items, which are things you can buy to go with some of the stamp sets that are in cele celebration, like painted seasons. There is a die set you can purchase now called Celebration Coordination that goes with that. There was a Go Hoppy. That one is gone. There was a cupcake for, that went with Hello Cupcake. That is gone. Uh, there is the Lasting Lily one still and the Painted Seasons one still, but they are going fast. Um, also, if you were hoping to have a cute bunny for Easter, the Bunny Punch Builder is currently not available because it sold out. 
Uh oh. Okay, thanks, Jen. Um, I got a message that said it was held. Yeah, the bunny is cute, and the um, basket weave embossing folder is low inventory. So if you want that, get it quick. Huh. Oh, uh, the only glitch in the Stampin' Up! system had to do with the, it was a billing glitch for the paper pumpkin, but it might have something to do with them. They're, um, they're upgrading their systems and maybe it has something to do with that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I heard Facebook was. I, I don't know. I didn't know about that. Anyway, so I know I'm kind of speeding through all this. Um, Back to Kathleen's party, if you want paper pumpkin, which is $19.95 a month plus any tax in your area, if you go monthly, that you can't put a host code in for a hostess code. But if you do a three-month, six-month, or 12-month subscription, you save a little bit and you can put a hostess code in. So it would help whoever's code, you know, whoever's party it was if you did that. So you can do prepaid subscriptions then you're set for three, six, or 12 months. And that also earns you a celebration item or two or more. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, this says, everybody check out Gold Glitter Girl's channel. It says she's getting ready to record a video for a giveaway. That came up as me having to approve it. I'm not going to hit anything, but I'm just letting everybody know. Okay, Jen? Um, so yeah, check out her channel too. And then lastly, if you would like to join Stampin' Up, now is the time because you can get more product free with your starter kit. And honestly, you can just come on, get your starter kit for $99, get $175 worth of products, um, which is 50 more than you would normally get. No shipping, it's free shipping, just any tax in your area. So you're getting $53 of product just to sign up. And then if you don't meet the minimum quarterly requirement, then you're gone, but you got all this product for, you know, extra product for signing up. And you can do that. Or if you also would like this lovely tote, which I have and I love, um, I just need to do outdoor parties somewhere, you know, so I can take stuff with me. <laughs> Anyway, there you get the same $175 worth of products and the craft and carry tote. And that's just $129, which is a bargain. It's $20 cheaper than what we existing demonstrators could pre-order it for. So it's a good deal um, to do that. If you would like to join my team, I would love to have you. And I'm fairly new at this. So you know, have to bear with me. I try to give little rewards here and there, you know, to team members, but I need to build up <laughs> before I can do a whole lot more than what I'm doing. So that's all I wanted to do on the business end for now. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Okay. So tonight I decided, um, I had a little trouble deciding what I wanted to do actually. So <laughs> I sort of wanted to use, I, I, every month at the beginning of the month, I go through what I have and what I'd like to make and everything. And I, I wanted to make something with this Vibrant Vases set, which is in the um, Occasions catalog, okay? Because I, I already had the Varied Vases set, and I learned, I was watching some videos last night, I think, when I was tired and just didn't want to do anything else. Um, I learned that this set actually was designed around a demonstrator named Mary Fish when she reached her $1 million sale status. Hi, Jess, for fun. Oh, you're having a blizzard. Oh, where are you? Yikes. Oh, so many people with so much snow. We are actually, it was warm. It was 50 Fahrenheit, Colorado. Wow. Hmm. I was thinking you were going to say Minnesota because <laughs> I know they've had a lot of snow too. Um, anyway, 
this varied vases set was in the annual catalog and they both go with this vase builder punch, which I'll turn upside down because I'm glaring you. Um, the punches out three vases, a little um, tulip and a little greenery piece. Hi, Deborah. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Okay. I wonder when Kathleen said, hey, hi, sis. <laughs> so anyway, well, thank you for coming. And no, I didn't remember that. See, I need a, I do need a cheat book. I should start writing these down. So I'm going to use both of these a little bit. Um, and there's some tricks that I am learning as I go um, on how to use them with this. Because it's a little bit tricky. But it, it, once you get it, it's not too bad at all. Okay. So I decided, because these are kind of little things, I decided to use the Whisper White note cards and envelopes. So they're smaller than regular cards. Um, you know, they're this this size, which is, you know, these are the envelopes, but they're um, three, like three and a half by five is the size of a, the note card when it's folded up. So that's what we're going to use. Put them away. And I think I also use the stitched rectangle framelits and I use some other punches and we'll bring them in as I go. And then I also wanted to use the, and I probably put it away already, the floral romance paper, which is in the occasions. Let me see if I have the book and I'll show it to you that way. Just be faster if I do it in here. Yes, this paper. And this paper has two sheets of it. These two they're showing here are vellum. So I wanted to use those. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you so much, Deborah. I appreciate the kind words, although I have to say it's been a struggle this week for me. <laughs> so let me bring in the first card we're going to do. It's a little note card, and it's pretty simple. It's just this one here. I love these little um, flowers. They call them frosted flower embellishments. And the, this color is fresh fig. And then they also have a petal pink one and then a frosted clear one. They are low inventory, so if you are interested in them, they look like this. And the number is 148782 to order it. It's in the occasions catalog, but they are getting low in inventory. Um, yeah, I like the note card size too. And so let's just get started, hopefully. <laughs> um, now. I'm not going to do this right now, but I want to show you a, a trick because um, I already stamped it out. When you are using this punch, and I learned this by watching someone else's videos. I watched a couple of them, and so um, I just want to share it with you. And I can't remember whose it was right now. I so, And it wasn't Mary Fish. It was somebody else. But when you do this first thing you should do is punch out a template because you see the vases on here are upside down so you just take a piece of cardstock open your punch stick it in punch it and lay this down on your stamping mechanism i have the stamparatus and put it in here and lay your stamps place them in the holes in the openings and that way when you stamp these on well let's just do it let's just do it let me be a little daring here i'll get some fresh fig and we'll just stamp because i already looks like i didn't clean my stamps good so it's already on the paper a little bit this is an in color 2017 to 19 which by the way if you know anything about stamping up they have neutrals, brights, regals, and subtles as their main uh, color families. And they have 10 stamp colors, ink colors, excuse me, in each one of those. And then they have what they call in color. And they have five colors that are two years, and this time it was 2017 to 19, 
and five colors that are two years that were 2018 to 20. So the fresh fig, I write an I for in color on the front of mine. And then on the back, I write which year it's in because I want to use the, you know, I want to use them, get use out of them. And those I got last year, they had a promotion to get all 10 in color stamp pads free when you signed up as a demonstrator. So I got 10 ink pads for signing up in addition to my starter kit. Oh, yay, Paige, that's good. <laughs> okay, see, I love the Stamparatus because you can just keep pushing or you can re-ink. I don't really need to re-ink. I'm so out of room here. <laughs> For those of you that watched my room tour, this is the stamp chamois. I just pulled it out of its case. I keep it in. I'm cleaning my stamps with it. The... Um, the purples and the reds, you know, they will stain your pot photopolymer stamps, but they still stamp fine. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So let's take our piece of paper now. Get this out of the way. And figure out what I do with the punch. And now let's open this up and, and punch it. Okay. So I'm going to line it up as best I can and they line up really perfectly well I'll probably have that over a little bit there we go I think there we go okay and out they pop there was something on the back of that card <laughs> I reused my card oops and there they are so the first thing like I said is make a little template I wrote this side up because the first time I did it I had it like this. Well, guess what? That's backwards the way the punch works. So this side up, there's my template and I'll keep it with my punch so that I can, or with my stamps so that I can um, use it again whenever I want to place my stamps in. So now I have all these beautiful little vases to color. So that is the main tip for the night with the vibrant vases and varied vases and let me figure out where i'm going to put that <laughs> oh my goodness okay so i already stamped and colored to ease the time here um so let me tell you what i did this is one of the note cards folded in half this is a piece of the color petal pink it's the one that's sort of the peachy pink Yes, you could color them and punch them out. That is true. I just wanted to show you the tip on the um, template. So this particular one I have embossed with the Subtle, which is my all-time favorite, which I can't even find right now. Oh, here it is. It's because I don't have it in its proper. Oh, no, that's not it. Probably right in front. Yes, it is. Right in front. <laughs> you can see it better on, on this than you can on here. It just leaves like um, almost like a linen texture. It's got like little streaks and drop dots through it. It just gives a nice texture to it. And um, I love it. That's one of my favorite um, embossing folders. Then this is a piece out of the Floral Romance, and I'm going to use the wood grain looking side. The other side is this dark leafy green. Actually, I'm going to use the dark green, and I have run this through one of the stitched rectangle dies, which I also love. And some of you might be so proud of me because I actually put them on magnets. <laughs> I had a couple sets here that I used frequently and it was driving me nuts and I finally cut a piece of magnet and put it on. So let's see which ones I used. I used, and I did, I was watching other demonstrators and they number them. So I used one, two, well, let's see. I think I did it on the, I used number five, which is going from the outside. One, two, three, four, five. And I believe the one right inside that uh, I use number five and six. Yep. 
And then this one, we're going to use the wood grain side. And I did it so that the wood grain goes up and down. I don't know why. I just felt like doing that. So, yeah. And I lost my vase. There it is. And I colored this with, um, uh, let me think, <laughs> petal pink, I believe, light and dark, Stampin' Blends, and Mossy Meadow Light. I only used the light, I think, on that Stampin' Blends. These are the alcohol markers. They all come, the ones they have all come in a light and a dark color which makes it really easy to blend the colors. So yeah, this is petal pink and this one's mossy meadow. And I had stamped it in fresh fig ink, just like I did for my little demonstration. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay, so let me get my Tombow glue and just adhere, pretty easy card. This one I did not do the stitch rack taggle for the very back background. I don't know why. I was struggling. I wanted to do more and I felt like I wasn't doing enough. But my creative juices aren't flowing real well this week. <laughs> I think just have a lot going on. And um, yeah. Now, um, what I did on here is I did glue the wood one onto the dark green, but I bumped up the dark green one, the leaves, onto um, dimensionals. So let me glue this down. I'm going to try and get it in the middle. And we are going to do just a little bit of stamping. Oh, that was really not good. Is it straight, Deb? Probably not. Oh, sorry, guys. We're going to start over on that. Okay, there we go. Before we do dimensionals, we're going to stamp, um, we're going to put our vase here, but another, here's another little tip. I did a little masky thing, okay? This is a little, just a sticky note. This is a plain white vase, punch the same. I'll figure out where I want this, probably just a little bit up from the bottom, a little more like there. And then, let me put this over and pull that out. So what we're going to do is just stamp stems. Um, and let's see which one I used. I used actually one out of the um, varied vases from the annual catalog just to put stems to the flowers on. And this is something I had never done before. <laughs> I had never masked anything. Yeah, I have a little bit on my plate, but so does everybody else. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to whine about it. Tonight's, we're here to have fun. We're here to have fun. But I am getting a little behind on some things. <laughs> okay, so the colors that we're using tonight are the Fresh Fig, which we already stamped with for the vase. We're going to use Mossy Meadow for the stems, which coordinates with the paper here in the background. Later on tonight, we'll be using Petal Pink and Gray Granite. Um, so let me stamp the, or ink this up. I don't want the I don't want the stems to be too long because we need the flowers to be you know within this <laughs> area certainly. So we're just gonna. Pick an area and plop them on. I have two. Oops. Well, we'll cover that with a flower. Just not going well tonight. Okay. Not going well tonight. Thank you, Jen. Okay. So let me put my stamp, my ink away. 
And then we'll pull up our mask and we'll put down the real vase that we want. And then we'll put our little flowers on at the top. Um, so we're just going to glue the vase down and I'm just going to use the liquid glue again. The alcohol markers will bleed through your paper. Um, and they do work best with dye inks. If you watercolor, then you want to use something like your stays on um, pigment inks, hybrid inks kind of thing. Okay, now let's bring in our little, actually, let's put our dimensionals on first and get it on the card. And hopefully, I can cover up that one <laughs> extra stemmy piece. I think, I think I can. Yep, there we go. <laughs> so we're just using the fresh fig ones. Oops. That's like the third time I've said oops already tonight. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, not pulling the adhesive up. Now, if you want, you could lay down some extra adhesive, you know, some glue with these two. I got them a little more even-y than I did the first time, but oh well. That's okay. It's still pretty. I like the cutesy little flowers. So how's everybody else doing? Are you having a good week? I'm hoping my week gets a little better. The weather is nice here, so. So tomorrow is supposed to be 51 Fahrenheit. <laughs> you, uh, not, no, I'm sorry, 61 Fahrenheit tomorrow. Today was 50. So, but I think I'll be going to the hospital and taking mom some clothes. They can put her in to transport her to skilled nursing. Hopefully that's the plan. Because I don't know if assisted is going to cut it anymore. So anyway, that's enough about that. See, normally when I do cards like this, I end up taking the designer paper all the way out to the um, edge, and I decided not to do that this time. Is that straight-ish? Straight-ish? Okay. Now, we still have to stamp. I usually do this first, too, but I didn't. Um, so, we have to pick what I did on here. I did use the hello out of the varied vases as well because it's just a tiny little hello and but I used this um, little bunch of flowers here just to put a little background on there first so I'm going to do that in petal pink petal pink when I first used Petal Pink, I wasn't a real big fan of it, but it's kind of growing on me because it's sort of like a neutral. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? So we're going to, I'm going to get a different scrap paper up here. I'm going to stamp off. I'm going to do it again, actually. I don't know if I had good coverage on that. Oh, that one looks worse. Hang on. There we go. And I'm just going to stamp that right in the middle. Just put a faint image on there. Not much at all. And then, good, I'm glad you're doing well. We're going to use the fresh fig because it'll bring out the color of the flowers. And get stuff out of the way. And we have to get our little hello. We could use no we're gonna stick with hello <laughs> uh, wait I missed something oh your house got saved from foreclosure oh yes that's a good thing wow excellent you like the bigger yeah I kind of do too now that I've done it once Paige <laughs> Oh, 
Well, I'm glad there's some good news happening. I am glad of that. Okay. Just getting my littlest stamp block out here. And using Fresh Fig. Now, I don't have... You should, when you're using photopolymer, you should be using a... Um, a, a mat under it to get the best impression possible. I'm wiping this off in some paper because I got too much on the edges. And I'm not happy with that. <laughs> so just tap. Don't push down too hard on your ink. And then straight down, straight up. Boom. There we go. Pretty easy. I'm so glad of that. That's great, Deborah. So are you really sisters or is this just a crafty relationship here? <laughs> Kathleen and Deborah. I just wonder because, you know, there's a couple people that call each other sis, but they're not really blood sisters and stuff here on YouTube. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put two little dimensional, mini dimensionals, I think I put, or maybe regular ones, here and here. And then we're just going to put a little glue under this end because it's going to already be bumped up onto the corner of the card. So let me get my dimensionals. Hi, Rosie. Thank you for coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. I have one of those. I'm a half sister to somebody. She's actually closer to my daughter's age, though, and they're they're good friends, and I never see her. <laughs> so it's just how it worked. Anyway, oh my. Such is life. Well, that's good. Good to have family of any kind to talk with. My daughter is my go-to family talky person. Okay, and like I said, if you like these little embellishments, get them now because they're low inventory. And once they're gone, they're probably going to be gone. I never know what will carry over, but... I'm told that not many things like that carry over from um, occasions and celebrations. So there you have it. There's our, I didn't do anything with the inside of these because they're note cards. You're supposed to write notes. Hi, Clay, JWB52Z. So there's the first card we made. We're making note cards tonight. We're using the floral romance paper and the varied and vibrant vases. Um, stamp sets. This one's in occasions. This one's in the current annual catalog, which by the way, the current annual catalog um, only goes through June 2nd. And April is on stage, which I won't be able to go to this time, which is where all the demonstrators get together and they will be seeing previews of the new annual catalog. And I won't get to see them till later may will be our pre-order period for the june effective date oh no your power is flickering yikes thank you well we're going to make some more this is the next one we're going to do now this one this piece in the background is a piece of um vellum let me hold i already pre-cut um actually what i did is i cut a piece of white cardstock so you can see it better and it's a piece of vellum, see? Uh, this is out of the floral mo romance. This is probably my favorite piece out of that. Even these little flowers here have like the petal pink. And these little flowers go perfectly with the little flowers in the background. So, um, and then I have a piece of fresh fig. Like a, it, this was actually a scrap piece, but I cut a new, another piece to sort of match it. Um, and then these, actually I pulled them out. These were left over from paper, a paper pumpkin kit. Thank you, Paige. I'm glad you like my little designs. I like to play with paper <laughs> and
and stamps. It's all good, right? Um, so I do have to color these um, vases, though. I didn't color them, but I have all the other pieces. And we're also going to use a little ribbon in here. But let me go ahead and get the two background pieces glued down first. That will be what I'll do first. Then we'll do some coloring and stamping, a little bit of stamping. And this time we'll stamp the sentiment out of the vibrant vases from the occasions catalog. I love little vases and flowers and little note cards, actually. So anyway... I did do one full-size card. We're not going to do it tonight, but I'll show it to you. Show it to you. Um, I actually have, uh, let's see. We're just going to do three cards tonight, and then I'll show you two other ones. Okay. I want to keep it short because I think some other people are going live also tonight. I don't know. So I'm going to use this just for you this time out of the Vibrant Vases. I should have put that down first. So let me find it. Maybe. I have to order some more blocks because that is what I have a shortage of. And I don't do everything on the Stamparatus. I just don't. I don't know. Oops, I don't need that. I need my fresh fig, which, you know, when I first got this, I was like, I know Kathleen's a purple person, but um, I'm not. Oh, thank you. You guys are so sweet. Well, I had to tell you, this is a lot of fun for me normally, although I was a little stressed out yesterday morning trying to, <laughs> trying to get some, I couldn't. Once I get started, I'm okay, but getting started sometimes is um, is a problem for me. It's like I had to figure out my starting point and what I, what I want to play with. And then I'm okay once I get the first card going. Then it's like, ooh, I can do this. And then, ooh, and then I don't want to stop, and I have to. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know if other people are like that or not, but uh, that's how I that's how I roll. So, so for example, all these cards I did took me probably like six hours yesterday before I had to go take mom to the doctor. Anyway, so this is going to be our little flag, and because I can't cut a straight line or anything, uh, we're going to use the triple banner punch. Love this punch too. Thank you very much, Paige. I appreciate that. And we're going to do this end. And I kind of want to cut a little bit off. Kind of do. It's a little bit. See, they have guides over here for, I think this is one inch, one and a half inch, and two inch. And this strip is not uh, one inch. It's probably five eighths or seven eighths or something. No, it's not seven eighths. Probably five eighths. I should measure. <laughs> It was just a leftover strip. I use my leftovers both in food. Nope, I need a little more, a little more off. I think I need, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to cut a little more off that side and leave the other side bigger. And I didn't quite have it in the middle as much as I wanted to. Oop. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen and Paige and Rosie and Rebecca and anybody else. I appreciate that very much. Okay, let's get this glued down first, which I see I got off the paper a little bit. Um, another tip, don't use your snail um, or whatever tape runner with the vellum because I did that on a piece and it showed through. Uh, luckily, it was a small piece. Um, you can use your mini glue dots, but try then even those you have to kind of conspicuously put them behind something that they won't show. Um, use your. It's better to use your wet glue, and 
and I am going to take my snips and just trim a little bit off the top here because I, I got it hanging over just a tad. I must not have been able to measure right yesterday either. I don't know. Just a tad. But it goes all the way down to the bottom, so we're okay that way. All right. Um, and I'm going to glue that down too. And um, on this one, I was trying to figure out, I, did, I get a little lazy sometimes too. I didn't want to stamp flowers and have to color them on white and then fussy cut them or something on the, on the um, top of the card up there. You know, I had to put white up here or something fussy cut us. So I thought, what am I going to do? And then I was looking at this paper and these leaves and I remembered I had these spare vellum leaves in my extra paper pumpkin stuff so i found those and pulled them out and that's how it came about <laughs> the feed froze oh it's not frozen on my end um hit the little refreshy thing and see if that helps now i think we're going to go ahead and put this down too and this measures, hmm, let's see, this is two and a half by three. It's a kind of a weird size. That's because it was a scrap. And this is like four and three quarter long or tall by three. And the note card, cards are, I think, five by three and a half. Yep. I think I said that before. Is everybody frozen? Oh, huh. Okay. I don't know. It didn't freeze on my end, so I'm not sure what happened there. Sorry about that. I'll apologize for YouTube. <laughs> Yay, Kathy. From Georgia. Hello from Georgia. No, apparently it wasn't just you, because somebody else said they froze for a minute, too. I don't know. As Brandy said, there have been glitches in the um, internet and stuff today, apparently. I tried to stay off the internet some today um, because I had a lot of, well, I had some spreadsheet stuff to catch up on and paperwork stuff to do for my personal stuff and my mother's stuff and some calls to make and all that kind of jazz. Okay, now I don't know if you can tell it, but this one I colored with markers, so we're going to do that. This one, there's another stamp in the set, um, and they, well, let me show you the case. They have sort of a, it's not totally solid, but it's kind of solid, and then the one in the varied vases has the really solid. So I like this one because it gives it sort of a, textured look onto your vase but it doesn't if you do tone on tone which is what we're going to do and yes i should have done this ahead of time <laughs> so we'll see how it works yeah i've heard that too clay because a lot of um a lot of demonstrators um use facebook live and then they upload them later to youtube i have never done a facebook live I built my audience mostly here on YouTube before I even knew there was such a thing as a Facebook Live. So I don't know that I'm going to do that, you know, ever. Um, we'll see. But in my Facebook group, Deb House Crafty Cottage, you know, I just, I just started that like a month ago or so. I believe. Okay, I'm trying to line this up. Sorry if my head's in this shot. And I'm just doing petal pink on petal pink. It's a little off. That's okay. I'm going to do it again. Or I'll flip it over if I don't like it. I should have done that before I punched it out. It works. It's perfect. And then if you take a little Wink of Stella and wink it up. We're going to wink it up with our wink of Stella after we close our stamp ink pad. <laughs> yep. 
You tried posting about your party and it wouldn't let you post. Kathleen's having a party for me, by the way, online. If you'd like to place an order, a Stampin' Up! order, please place it through Kathleen. I'll give the host code again at the um, end of the live. And that will help her and me. So we're going to let the Wink Estelle dry on that one. And we're just going to pull out. Now, actually, when I colored this one. Hmm. No, I think I did use my Stampin' Blends. One of them I colored with my Stampin' Writes. But I think I'm going to use the Blends. Now, the thing is, there is no fresh fig in the Stampin' Blends yet anyway. There might not be if that color goes away in June. So I'm going to use Light Blackberry Bliss. Um, yeah, uh, I think that'll be the closest to the fresh fig. But first we'll do the light colors. And what I did, I just, it just did easy coloring, guys. I'm not, you know... This, the spaces are so small on here. I didn't want to do, and I should have done this before I um, punched, cut it out too. But we'll call this Backwards Wednesday. <laughs> you love the colors. I love the blends. I really like them a lot. And, you know, I bought a whole set before I became a demonstrator of Spectrum Noir, almost a whole set. Um, their markers because Copics were just, first of all, I didn't know how good I'd be at it. And I didn't want to spend all that money on Copics. And then I became a demo. Anyway, I had the markers and I used them a couple times, but I was sort of intimidated by, um, um, you know, trying to match up. And I, I have a good eye for color usually, but I was intimidated by trying to match up colors and making sure they went good together you know so with Stampin' Blends I don't have that problem <laughs> that was the light petal pink now we're going to use and I'm using the writing end because these are little tiny spaces I'm not using the um the coloring end I'm just doing a little bit darker at the top and I'm going to do a little darker over the light down in these spaces. I'll check the chat in a minute. Hopefully it's not flying up all over the place there. And then, let's see. Thank you, Rebecca. That was nice of you to wish her well. Yes, Kathleen was a demo. Maybe someday she will be again. <laughs> Joanne, um, Happy Mail Stamper, is one of my downlines. And one of her downlines um, <laughs> kind of only had $30 or something like that to go and um, to meet her requirement. And she forgot about it or something. And now she just messaged back that, she wants to get back in. I'm like, oh, yay. Well, that's good. I, 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 can, I don't remember what the waiting period is, but whatever it is, I'm sure she can get back in then. So that'll be great. Okay. So we're using, this one's a little bit different shape than what we had on there. And let's put these away so I can have room because I don't have much workspace, as some of you may know <laughs> from watching my video. Cool, Kathleen. Well, before you do, come up with a plan on how you're going to make it work, okay? And talk to me so we can get it working for you. Okay, we're going to use... Oh, see, I did kind of mess up Ooh, again. I used this ribbon on this one, but what I did is I wrapped it around the back of the um, vellum piece. Oh, yeah, yeah. What I might do is cut this into a zigzag and not have it go all the way over so that it looks like part of this. I think I'll do that. Okay. Plan B. First, I'm going to cut it straight here because there's a crease in it. And then figure out how long, about that long. 
be hard for me to write this into a um, tutorial because you know, just about that long. Okay, now we're going to bring my little snips in and just do like you would on a flag and cut in from the edges and hope it works. Try something a little different. Did you all know Tim Holtz? No. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. Like a valve replacement or something? I had no idea. Just recently, I gather, right? Okay. So now we're going to try and line these up like this. I think that'll look pretty cool. And we're going to put our vases. This one was sitting just, put this down just a little bit. We're getting our placement first. And then this one will overlap and sort of look like it's sitting on there. So that's the plan. But what we're going to do this time that I didn't do yesterday is we're going to get these cut, the stems cut off and figure out where we're going to want them to and then put them down first. So I use kind of these bigger leaves in the big vase. Oops. And I put them down with glue dots. That's good that he sounds positive. Wow. Wow. That's pretty major surgery. Pretty major surgery. And I think I have a... Um, so I'm using two green vellum and I'm using one... Um, sort of clear vellum just trying to figure out the placement which is not going well and I think when I did these I actually cut some of the stem off and I may do the same again that white vellum or clear vellum is a little bit um, bigger than these other two do I like that I don't think I like that seems too big. I might just go with the two green this time. Let me see. And I have a small white one I'll use on the other vase. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let me glue dot these together. As soon as I unbury my glue dot. Ah, my friend Charlie had some stents put in a couple, two years ago year and a half ago, two years ago, April. That was pretty scary. <laughs> but, uh, yep, it happens. I'm hoping that my heart holds out. I don't have any issues that I know of, but it runs in my family, you know, to have heart issues. So we'll see. We shall see. Okay, so we're going to be putting them. I'm going to snip those little stems just a little bit. Just so they don't stick out of my vase when I get it on there. I'm going to put that right about there. Then we have these three. You want your brain to last longer than your ticker? I guess so, Brandy. I'm kind of torn. My dad had dementia for 14 years, and um, I will say the only good thing about that was that he didn't know what was going on with all the other health issues that he had. But the white one in front of the yellow vase. Well, I had the white one kind of going in front of that one on the little one there. 
So, but it's a smaller white one. Let's try that and see. We will try it and see. But I want this to be popped up overlapping over this way a little more. Something, nope, these have to go over a little bit. There, like that. Like that? Pretty good. Can you see it? I just want everything to last on me for <laughs> as, as long as it possibly can, and then I want to go quick <laughs> in my sleep. But I don't know, you know, if you're a religious person, it's in God's hands, as they say, right? Whatever will happen, will happen. Just hope that it's not like, you know, I'm in an accident and have a brain injury or something like my daughter's father had. Because he's not the same. He's not the same. He never will be. And he has other issues related to it now. So, anyway. There, we got some some plants going on. And let me put, um, I don't have the vases down all, all the way yet because I wanted to get the ribbon down. I'm going to use glue dots for that too. Yes, right. So, we're going to do that right about here. And I'm going to just tack it there to start. Slide it up under those vases. Look out, vases. Here we come. The vases are sort of just tacked because of the sticker, the glue dot underneath the leaves coming through, which is just enough to hold them in place while I get the ribbon down before I put the vases down for, for good. And now we're going to bump this up on dimensionals, which I've buried again. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Here they are, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was having that conversation with somebody the other day about being able to take care of ourselves. It's a hard thing. My mom's mind is really actually very good still, but her body just is not cooperating with her. But she made it to 90, you know, so she's 90 or still, so <laughs> it's pretty good. You're not sure you want to be a popsicle? Oh, have your head frozen. Have your head frozen? Huh. Not your whole body, just your head. Hmm. That always reminds me of that Woody, um, oh, what was his name? Woody Allen, was it? Movie? Oh, my goodness. It was a weird movie. Futuristic kind of movie. It was really strange <laughs> for the time. Okay. Now we're just going to move this up a little bit, actually. Uh-oh. See? I don't know. Put that down too far. That's going to cover up my U. Eh. I don't need to move the foliage. I just need to move the vase up just a tad. There. Right about there. I think I'm going to try and just put that down with a little bit of glue. Doing things a little bit backwards here tonight. And then this one is going to go on minis. Mini minis. Oh, let's see. Mini dimensionals. I'm so glad Stampin' Up! came out with these minis. <laughs> They're perfect. I like them. And one more. Okay, let's get them out of the way. Oops. In a century or two, there may not even be Earth as we know it anymore. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. 
other than I fear for my grandchildren, my children and my grandchildren. This one we want to have right about there. Now we just need some little embellishments. So we're going to put a couple. I don't know if I like these flowers on here, but I do like the sequins. So these are the, what are these? Adhesive back sequins. These are in the annual catalog and they have five different colors, including petal pink and mint macaroon and pearl white. But I think I went with the, um, actually there's one they call soft sea foam, but I went with the one they're calling mint macaroon, but it looks more, it looks different to me than what they said. So let me get, and I also used some petal pink, which does indeed look like petal pink. Let me get my tool, my take your pick tool. And we're just going to put a few of these around here and there. I'm going to just use these this time. Maybe put one. No, I don't like it there. Maybe here. And, you know, I could have got out the ones that, um, that had the little flowers on. I didn't think of that. Nope, I want a petal pink one. Petal pink. I think we'll put that over here. Somewhere. Maybe there. <laughs> and then I will bring that green one in and put a green one over here. Because I like uneven numbers. And then down here, I just put two petal pink ones. And then I, um, one of the green ones. Blinging it up. So this card took a little bit longer than the other one, but part of that was because I did it backwards. Now I did, on this one, I used a petal pink and two frosted of those little flowers, but I kind of like it with the sequins. Which one do you like better? Hi, Penny. Yay, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. This is card number two. And this was card number one. And we have another one we're going to do. Sequins. Yes, I like the sequins better too, I think, on that one. On this one, I like the, the flower, the little flowers. Oh, sorry. It's like zooming in. I have too much stuff on my desk, I think. So these were leftovers from the paper pumpkin kits some couple months ago. And these we stamped and colored. And in the beginning, guys, I gave a a tip on how to use the vase builder punch. So be sure to rewatch that if you didn't see that. And let me get these off the desk and put them somewhere out of the way and show you the. Now, on the next one, I did it in two colorways, but we're only going to do this one. Um, so this is one of the other floral romance papers as well. And then this is a uh, pear pizzazz, I believe is the color I used on that one, but we're not going to do that one. This is just a piece of whisper white and I am bringing in the detailed trio punch, which I love. It makes these decorative little corners. Um, and then we just stamp little florals out of the vibrant vases set. And it's this one right here we're going to do, I believe. Actually, I did a little different on the pink one, but that's what I used on this one. And then we took the Celebrate Every Tiny Victory, which I think could be used for many different things. Anybody undergoing treatment or whatever. Oh, thank you, Paige. I appreciate that. So we're not going to do the green one because I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm not really, I love plants. I can't grow them, but I'm not really a green person. I'm a blue or pink person usually, but I thought it came out cute. So I have pieces, some pieces ready. Oh gosh. 
Nope, that's a junk one. I managed to remember to put my phone on silent. And right before I went live, my mother called anyway. You're not a green person, Brandy? Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> I don't know for why. So this is, see, this is what I used on the other card and the flip side of it. Oh, I thought, I'm not sure I'm crazy about that. But it sort of looks like gray granite in there, even though they didn't say that was one of the coordinating colors. And so I pulled in a piece of gray granite and I used the stitched rectangle dies. Uh, let me tell you which number I used because I don't remember. I think it was four. Yes, this I numbered them four from the outside down. And this one, I don't think I used a stitched one because I put the detail on. And I'll give you the measurements for that. Hang on. So die number four is like three and seven eighths by two and five eighths. And then the whisper white piece is roughly three and three quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. So kind of weird sizes. And what I did on this little vase here is I punched it out of the vellum, the other vellum in the, in the kit. I, and then I put it on, I think I put it on Whisper White. Actually, maybe I just didn't. Maybe I've just put it on to the Whisper White. I think I was experimenting. And the first time I put, I backed it with Whisper White, but I don't think I did on this one. So let's get started. Um, first thing we're going to do is stamp in case I mess the stamping up. <laughs> Um, and before I do that, I need to do my edges so that I know my space that I can stamp in. While you clap. <laughs> I mean, green's okay. It's just not the color I gravitate to when I'm crafting. Um, but, you know, green is in nature as much as blue is and as much as pink is or any other color. So... I pretty much like lots of colors. I just don't, I gravitate towards blues, it seems like, and pinks, and but I like pink flowers a lot and stuff. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do on this one, I again used uh, this little thing, which is good because I still have it on a little block, this little cluster. And I used Petal Pink. Oh, my glue is hanging out there open. Can you see this mess I have? Oh, my goodness. Green and blue are beautiful together. Purple and blue are beautiful together. <laughs> anyway, um, so let me get my scrap sheet here. Oops. Can't show you that side. That's something I'm working on for another project that I have. So we're just going to make it really light across the whole middle. And let me put that on here. So I'm going to stamp off. And then I'm going to do another layer. A real faint flowers. And I think I need a little bit more up here. We're just going to double some of them up, but it's okay. I think I'll just, okay, that's it. That's what I'm doing there. And then we're going to do the celebrate every tiny victory every tiny victory which is in the vibrant vases stamp set let me take my vase off of here which i'll probably lose and clean my other stamp oh i have to move some stuff first because i can't get to my chamois to clean my stamp <laughs> oh my goodness Okay, now this we're going to do in um, gray granite. Another one of those colors that 
I really, the smoky slate I really like because it's like a blue gray. This one I wasn't sure of. It's sort of a taupe gray, but it's growing on me. <laughs> it's growing on me. I'm going to try stamping over here first. Okay, that's pretty good. So hopefully it'll still be good. And I'm going to put that sort of towards the top end of the, it doesn't look like I have ink coverage, of the flowers. <sighs> okay, I think it's straight enough. <laughs> good night, Kathleen. Have a good night. Purple and blue are your favorites. I had a bowling ball years ago. I used to be a bowler. Can't say I was great, but I wasn't bad. Anyway, um, it was it was a blue and white sort. It was really pretty. And I remember we were packing up my house to move one time, and um, I kind of remember that rolling down the hill. My driveway was like a steep hill, and I don't know whether one of my kids pushed it down or if it just rolled out of the garage when we were doing something in the garage. I don't remember. Anyway, yeah, that bowling ball went bye-bye. Okay, so now we have to punch our little vase, the littlest one. So I'm just going to take a corner of the paper here, the vellum. And make sure I have it all the way in. And there we go. Hopefully I got it. Dude, it just doesn't want to come out. Ah. Okay, last time I must have stuck it in a little further because, oh, you know what it was. It was right on the edge of the paper. No big deal. We'll just snip a little off the top. There we go. That's the first time I had that happen. Probably because it was vellum. Okay. Whose hands are pretty? <laughs> my hands? Mm, I don't even have my nails done. All right, let me move this. Well, we'll keep it here because I have to stamp again. Okay. Now, what I did on this one is I tied a little itty bitty piece of twine around the neck of the vase and put a glue dot on to hold it down so that might take me a few minutes here <laughs> might take me a few minutes but thank you anyway penny if that's who you meant So I think what I did is I sort of tied it off the thing and then I put it back on because it's just a little tiny itty bitty vase neck. We'll see. We shall see. And I think what I'm going to do is grab a glue dot and put it on there now right at the neck. Hopefully right at the neck. Maybe not. Ah, that's what I did. I remember now I rolled it and put it right at the neck. You can roll your glue dots in the finger to make them um, skinnier. And it just took my just twine away. Okay. Come on, Deb. Get it together, Deb. There we go. Now we have it started, and we can push that down so we can tie a little bow. I have a, I don't know how I got this. I think my mother has a wheelchair. Um, she has a transport chair, but we actually went to the um, orthopedic doctor slash hospital yesterday in a transport van in her bigger wheelchair which does not fold up easily to go in my little car, but I managed to do it, but I think I got cut trying to get it into my car or something because I don't remember doing that. Anyway. Okay, I just had to fiddle with this bow just a little bit. 
and then I'll cut those ends off. And I just want the ends to be short because I'm going to shorten those bows a little bit too, the loops a little more. I think that'll work. I'm going to cut this little end a little more. It's hard to see what I'm doing. I know. Sorry. Don't worry, guys. This is the last card we're going to make, but I have two other ones I'll just show you because we're already at 8.15 or something. So this is where this is going to go, right about here. And before I put that there, I have to see if I have another mask because I want to stamp those flowers a little darker right at the vase. And I did have some masks here. Here we go. So I have a little mask right here that we can use. And we're going to put that right about there and hold it down. And then we get my little flowers again. Sort of a small crowd tonight, but I appreciate all you being here. All right, I think I want to slide that down just a little bit. And I did not stamp off this time. And then we'll pull that up. And there we have flowers that our little vase will be right in the middle of, like that. So now I just need a glue dot on the back of my vase or two. Vase, vase, what do you say? Vase or vase? <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, that's going to go right there, right about there. Okay, get some of this out of the way, get this out of the way, and now we can uh, assemble our card. Ensemble. Get snips out of the way, get my punch out of the way. <laughs> I'm getting punchy. Bring out my cards so I remember what I did. Okay. Basically, now it's just gluing stuff down. So, we're going to glue this on first. Then, we'll glue that onto the cardstock. And I am using wet glue again. Um, on this one, I guess I, it must have had a scrap piece away because it's in a little further. This one, I brought it out closer to the edges. So, but I like how I like the punch. Because I like that gray, little pop of gray showing through. And the gray words then go along with it. And the twine is sort of a taupe gray. So I think it goes together. I think it is according to the price. Huh? <laughs> I'm confused. What are we talking about? Just dotting around the detailed stuff. Okay. Oh, vase or vase? Oh, <laughs> that could be. <laughs> could be according to the price of, yes. It's a vase if it's super expensive, and it's a vase if you're a lowly person like me. <laughs> Middle class person, I should say. Okay, so there we have that. Now let's glue this down onto our note card. We're using the Stampin' Up! note cards for those of you that didn't know. They come in a pack of 20, I believe. 20 cards and 20 envelopes in Whisper White. And I've had them sitting here on my shelf, and I finally am using them. Finally am using them, and I didn't get that on very straight, but the, luckily the wet glue lets us move it around for a little bit. 
Okay, I think that's probably close enough. I need a new camera set up because this one has legs that go like this and makes everything bump up. Yes, a vase. <laughs> it's a vase. Like at the art shows and stuff, right? High society. I actually think I got that on sort of straight, maybe. <laughs> okay, so there's, oh no, we have, we have to decorate with our little flowers. Nope, they're not in their case. This is not good. This is not good, guys. The flowers are trying to run away. Where'd they go? Well, hmm. I know not where they went. <laughs> I've lost my little flowers. Oh, here they are. I found them. They were lost, but now they're found. I just want one little petal pink one up here in the middle. Just right about there. Just a little pop of something. Thank you, Rosie. I found it. Okay, so... Those are the three flowers we made, I mean, flowers, cards we made tonight. This one was of that same venue, but instead I used um, pear pizzazz and fresh fig. And I used fresh fig, one eighth inch ribbon and one little clear uh, frosted flower on there, which I just put glue on. This was our first one. This was our second one. And then I did make um, another one, which is this, but I don't have pieces made to go ahead and make it tonight. And it's basically what I did is I put the, the lighter vellum that we used for that last bit vase <laughs> um, down in the background. And then a piece of the, the wood plank stuff that is this behind a piece of this vellum and then I had a little piece of um, the petal pink paper like we just used in the this card that has little dots of white and I think gray granite in it and I put a piece of whisper white under it or on top of it and I stamped in fresh fig thanks for understanding which was out of the vibrant vases and then I covered that with a little piece of the um, pink vellum that we just used on this vase. <laughs> I'm going to make it ritzy. And then just put a couple little of the flowers on. And I'm not crazy about that one. And then the last one I did, I was trying out a technique I saw someone else do on a video. So I can't take credit for the technique. Um, but what I did is I masked three vases onto the card um, as well as I masked. Well, first I put the vases where I wanted them on a mask. Then I pulled them up and then I masked these um, floral stems. And I stamped them in Versamark. I took that mask off, put the vase mask down and stamped them in uh, Versa mark, and then I used white embossing powder on it and embossed heat embossed them. And I kind of laid it all out and even the ribbon to figure out where I wanted it first. And then here's the technique I had never done before is I took a sponge brayer and I ran it over the petal print pink and I just went over the whole thing several times with petal pink on a sponge brayer. And that's what the background is. I think it came out kind of cool. And then this is a gray granite texture weave ribbon that's in the annual catalog. I love that ribbon. It feels real soft. It also comes in granny apple green. And then this is the new punch that Stampin' Up! has called the Story Label Punch. It looks like that. It's sort of similar 
to the pretty label punch, except it has these little, the corners are sort of notched out. See, very pretty. And then I did the little tiny flowers that were from the varied vases, which is in the annual catalog in the middle and petal pink. And uh, hoping your day blooms with happiness also from the varied vases in gray granite. And then just one of those flowers and some iridescent sequins. So that is another technique you can try sometime. <laughs> Thank you, Penny. <laughs> um, I haven't decided who I'm sending them to. I, I've been trying to think of different things to do with my lives. You know, I have some rewards for people that place orders with me, but I haven't really done anything like with my lives, like some of the other um, demonstrators do. So I will think about that. <laughs> I will think about that. I don't know. That might be just on my shelf for a little while for me to remember that I did that so I can do it again sometime. <laughs> anyway, because it's pretty, but I, I think I want to try it in blues and purples and maybe some greens. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Rosie D. Thank you, Paige. I'm reading backwards here. Butterflies. Yes, I have. I have done hummingbird cards in the past with the hummingbird, uh, what do you call it? I have it here somewhere. Here it is. With this set, I have done a card or two already in the past with this. So it's not on my agenda for this month to use again, but this is in the occasions catalog as well. Same with the framelits. Really pretty love in fact i think this was a, a fun fold with the hummingbird on the outside of the card and then the inside of the card had the flower if i remember correctly so and butterflies i love and if the butterfly duet punch was still in stock i'd be using that all over the place the color shape looks like a winged angel form I guess because there's a little, kind of goes in on the sides here. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see that in it, but yeah, cool. Anyway, I thought it came out pretty. So thank you for being here, everyone. I really appreciate it. And um, next week, have I hope to be here on Tuesday. Um, also... I normally try and get a video up on Thursday, but it's not going to happen this week because tomorrow will be transfer day for my mom, I think, to the um, rehab center instead of where she usually goes. And I think, I hope, um, and then I'm also busy trying to get some stuff done for two collabs I'm in, one with Paige for the 15th. Um, so we have two going on on the 15th, which is Friday. I believe there's one on the 16th, which is the house mouse one, if I'm not mistaken. And then Sunday is the last episode of our love is in the air medals in love hop. And honestly, I hope I get that done in time. Thank you, Brandy. You're quite welcome. I love hummingbirds. I had never seen one till I moved into this house. And now in the summertime, they, they come periodically and my mother used to get them a lot um but she would put specific feeders and plants out for them so thank you all for watching guys and i will talk to you the next time hugs love and peace take care thank you rosie Bye, Paige. Thank you. Thank you, Rosie.